In the space of a few months, a scarcity of PPE has become a glut. Containers of masks, gowns and gloves have been imported in such abundance that there's nowhere to store them. Thousands sit on the quaysides of ports and in farmers' fields, miles from the NHS front line. In the rush to supply the NHS, the government has spent £18 billion. Almost £800 million has gone to one company. Uniserve specialises in transporting freight by sea, air, rail and road. The company is owned and run by Ian Liddell, a successful businessman who founded it 36 years ago. It's great seeing all your faces. This year, Uniserve hit the jackpot. On the 30th of March, the Department of Health and Social Care awarded the company a contract worth £473 million to provide freight services for the supply of PPE and medical equipment. The contract was huge. Uniserve only recorded sales of £243 million for the whole of 2019. And within weeks, Uniserve was not only delivering PPE for government, it was buying it and selling it to government too, despite having no previous experience. In April and May, Uniserve signed contracts to supply gowns, aprons, face shields, goggles, visors and gloves, worth £303 million. In total, the government gave £777 million of contracts to Uniserve without offering other companies the chance to bid for them. In the global scramble for PPE, the need for speed trumped normal procurement rules. The more you've got one company in control of many different aspects, then you're potentially building into the system conflicts of interest and the potential that they could you know, use their control over those different aspects of the system to benefit themselves. The volume of PPE that Uniserve was importing started to cause problems. By late summer, warehouses were full and shipping containers stacked up at Felixstowe, blocking our largest port. James Kemble, a logistics company owned by Uniserve, got the job of unblocking the port. 15,000 containers of PPE were relocated. There are now 10 acres of them here at the port of Ipswich, and everything you can see on this site at Port of Tilbury is PPE. Containers full of PPE have also been squeezed onto a strip of rented land at Melton. Neither Uniserve nor the Department of Health can tell us how much of the PPE inside has passed its use-by date. One of the contracts that Uniserve won back in April was to supply the government with face masks like this one for 87 pence each. Now, independent pricing analysis later commissioned by the government showed that at the time the Uniserve deal was agreed, face masks were being sold for as little as 20 pence each. Indeed, the average market price was around 50 pence for a face mask. Mark Roscoe works for the NHS in Wales. He used to be the director of procurement. He says the price of PPE went through the roof in March, but when Uniserve charged the government 87 pence for a face mask, it was not delivering value for money. It does look a little bit, uh, as I say, north of what we would have been expecting to pay, even, even within the circumstances that were prevailing at the time. So you think the government did, on this contract, pay over the odds, do you? Well, it does look that way on face value. You Uniserve insists it has no connections with government, but the company's headquarters at Upminster Court are also home to the constituency office of Julia Lopez MP. The care with which we spend taxpayers' money matters very deeply to public... Julia Lopez is a Cabinet Office Minister. In June 2018, she paid a visit to Uniserve and met Ian Liddell. A few months later, he became her landlord. The Cabinet Office says Julia Lopez was not involved in the Uniserve contracts. Ian Liddell says no one at Uniserve ever spoke to her about the PPE deals. It's easy to forget that back in March, global demand for PPE far outstripped supply. The world descended on a few factories in China bidding for orders. The government needed to buy quickly and normal procurement rules were relaxed. But in doing so, the government greatly increased the risk it would end up over-ordering and overpaying.